don't use Chrome. I'm here to tell you today to use Samsung Internet instead of Google Chrome as your browser of choice on your Samsung smartphone. Here is your complete guide to using it so you can switch away from Chrome forever. Let's go. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's a pretty bold claim to say not to use Chrome, the default browser for pretty much anyone. But when it comes to Samsung phones, you will get the best experience out of Samsung's own internet browser. So let's dive in and sort of look at different areas and where you can get the most out of this because I truly believe once you use Samsung internet, you will never switch away from it. Starting with the user interface of Samsung internet, it is very, very simply laid out, but it's also got a lot of areas that you can interact with to get lots of function out of. The address bar is obviously the most important part of a browser. It's where you put your website information. And this can be found at the top of Samsung's internet browser, but it can be moved. You can move it to the bottom, but we'll get to that when we go through settings a little bit later. At the top left, next to the address bar, you have the search engine icon. This is where you can actually change the default search engine away from Google, make it something else, but you might not want to do that. Google's probably the safest bet, at least for searching, because from the address bar, you can literally just enter a thing and it'll search it in Google. That's what that allows you to do. To the right of the address bar, you have the copy icon. So rather than needing to highlight the text, hit copy, you literally just press the copy icon and it'll copy the address from the address bar and put it ready in your clipboard. When you do click on the address bar, you will see all of the favorites you've added into this little address bar area. You can add more into this down the bottom. If you're currently open on a web page, hit add and it will add it into this area. And of course, anytime you click on one of these, it'll take you straight to that page that you've added. Next to the add inside this too, you can edit. So if you want to delete some, this is where you can do it. I found this for myself to be a very convenient way to access websites. Every time I like a website, I'll add it into here because that way I'll just never forget it. It's a very visual way of seeing all my favorites. Down the bottom, you have some toolbar options. Again, I'll get into some more intricate stuff to do with this a little bit later. But in here, there's a lot of different stuff you can access. Things like going to home, going back, etc. You've got the tabs that you have open and you can interact and change the different views that the tabs are open in, whether it be a stacked layout, lists, which is what I have. This is where you can change it. If you want to create a group, for example, of tabs, you can long press on the tab itself and hit create group. And that will create a group of tabs that are similar, if you like. You can also lock tabs too, which I thought is quite neat. This layout that I've shown you is actually customizable, which I'm going to dive into in the settings pretty much right now. Going through the settings icon one by one, starting at the top, you'll see there's Samsung Cloud Sync. Very simply, any device, any Samsung device that's got your Samsung account logged in, you can then sync a bunch of different things with these different toggles across a multitude of those devices with that Samsung account logged in. This is quite good if you're switching devices quite a bit because when you switch to a new device or if you're going from phone to tablet, for example, all that stuff comes across when you're using the browser. It's a lot of good continuity. Underneath that is the browsing assist, which is settings for Galaxy AI, which I'll dive into a little bit later. Underneath that one is the homepage settings. You can set it to be quick access. So the websites you've got there, you can set it to be the current page you're currently on, or you can customize it. They're the three options. Underneath that is the toggling on of privacy report and most visited pages. Again, this is what you'll see in the home page when you first launch the browser with no tabs open. Scroll right to the bottom and you'll see both of those things, the privacy report and the most visited. That way you can have shortcuts or get a bit of a good overview of what you see. Intertwined with that too is the longer way to change your default search engine. So you can make it something else from here. And there's an option underneath there to add in some new ones from a list, of course, but they're there and you can choose. That's the beauty. Next thing we got is the layout and menus. This is where you can control and change the UI of Samsung internet. That address bar that you see at the top, move it to the bottom. The tab bar, have it or not. I find the tab bar quite useful. It kind of gives me a familiar desktop like feel and you can sort of scroll through the different tabs you have open. The bookmark bar underneath that, I've had less success with. Because even though I add a bookmark there, it just deletes itself. And I just for the life of me can't understand why. There's also the ability to hide the status bar. So the thing that shows you notifications and the time. When you're scrolling through a website, it can extend it full screen. So that doesn't get in the way and there's no distractions. I like that one. That's, not, that's on for me. There's also an option here to customize the menu. So that little thing that I showed you before, you can customize the icons and the, and the modes that you want in here. I'll go through some of these a little bit later, but you can see the ones that you can add from the top 
and you can see the ones that I've got currently in there underneath and you can interchange and swap between and take things out and add things as you need them. Then there's web page view and scrolling. There's some toggles in here to change sort of how you can interact with scrolling and interaction. So you can have a go to top or go to bottom button, for example. You can turn off the pull down to refresh, although I don't know why you would turn that off. That That's just like a staple now. There's a high contrast mode. This option is basically just to change the contrast for visibility purposes. You don't need to have this on. If you've got dark mode on, it kind of does a very similar thing, but high contrast will really accentuate the difference in colors to help people who maybe blur the colors a little bit. Then there's the privacy dashboard. This could be of interest to you if you want to see what websites are tracking you and how they're tracking you. And in here too, you can turn on smart anti-tracking. A couple of different toggles and ways you can turn this on always just for secret mode or never but basically what this will do is just ask website to not view your browsing history which i think is quite a clever tactic to put in here and something you might want to turn on there's some block toggles in here that i've seen that are very useful so you can go in here and turn the ones on at your leisure then there's the personal browsing data menu this is just where you can decide what happens when you close a tab clear browsing data that sort of stuff that's all in there the different toggles you've got sites and downloads if you ever see a website say allow notifications don't allow notifications i always choose never but if you accidentally hit allow you can come in here and sort of see which ones you've allowed to give you notifications and remove them should you wish to there's also the downloads option and there's two things in here the first one is automatically download something which no always prompt because you never know what website might try and force you to download and the second one is to choose where the downloads go you can actually have full control over that from this section now the next two sort of settings menus are what I think set Samsung Internet apart from everything else. It's the useful features and the labs menu options. In useful features, the one that I use the most is the video assistant. If you're watching a video inside a, a web page, usually you have to watch this really terrible web page video player. Sometimes it's awful, especially news websites. They just can't get it right. With this turned on, when you have a video playing in the browser, you'll actually see a little expand icon and you can click on that and it'll expand it out from Samsung internet into Samsung's native video player. And then once you're in here, you have really full control to use all of Samsung's video player options. The little swipe interactions to raise volume and brightness. You can make it a pop-up video if you like to take it out and be overlaid over something. It's really good and I really like the cleverness that Samsung have attached to this. And it's probably the main reason I never switched away from Samsung Internet's browser because it just gives you this useful feature. And then as time has gone on, Samsung have introduced even more things to sort of keep me in the ecosystem. The second one is the background play. This one's superb. If you're on a website that does not allow the option to background play videos, you might be on one right now. You can actually override that with this toggle. Turning background play on, whether that be with headphones or the phone speaker, if you exit out of the browser while a video is playing, it will not turn off the audio. That video will continue to play in the background, whether it be leaving the browser entirely or switching to a different tab, you can keep that video playing. Have a listen. Is you have the option to drag and drop files between the, all three devices. So you can take a photo from your phone and put it straight on your laptop and back again if you need to. Something that ties into that, and it's definitely more of a tablet thing, is second screen. Within here too, you can customize the address bar and a couple of different toggles that you can have turned on. Showing the reader option is a clever one because if you are someone who likes a simpler version of a website, you can turn on the reader view and it'll just give you the text. Much simpler to read that than all the stuff that sort of pops around you. The one underneath there is open app links in the browser. And I thought about it and initially I was like, well, why would I want to open it in the browser? But there are times where you don't want to exit out of the browser entirely and go to a different app. You just want to open it quickly to check and then go back to the page you were browsing. Turning this on will make that happen. If you, let's say, open a YouTube link and you don't want to just go straight to YouTube, it will open it in the browser as opposed to opening it in YouTube. That's what that toggle does and it works really well. And then in the labs menu, there's a couple of cool things in here. The first one is using system font for web pages. So whatever font you've got installed and using on your phone, it'll apply that font to the websites. Now it's a labs feature, so it's not gonna work all the time, but it just has some consistency with the text that you're interacting with by having this on. And the one under that is using the website's dark theme. So if a website doesn't have a dark theme, sometimes what will happen is dark mode will overlay that and force it. It can be a little bit iffy because some websites are not designed for dark mode and then it might not look right. 
Whereas this toggle turned on will prevent that from happening and keep the website looking consistent and in its native form. I really like it. The rest of the things in the settings menu aren't really worth covering. It's just to do with privacy notices and this is where you can toggle permissions for the, for the browser. You can have a look at this in your own leisure. Just know that they're there. What's great about the internet is you can view content made by anyone on their website. But what if you wanted to make your own and wanting to have people browse your information? That is where you can get help from today's sponsor, Squarespace. People are searching for your business more and more using their phone. So you need to make sure you are creating the best website possible to stand out amongst the crowd. Squarespace is the perfect place to get yourself out there. To get started, you can use Squarespace Blueprint. This is their new guided design system that allows you to choose from pre-created layouts and styles that get tailored from your brand or business. With mobile internet interactions, the default way to browse your website, Squarespace also automatically optimizes it for both desktop and mobile. Squarespace also have a plethora of tools to help with SEO optimization. Part of the YouTube game is setting up your own merchandise shop. And Squarespace is filled with all the tools I need to get started and put my brand and merch out there. They also have a really flexible payment gateway that offers different ways to pay and flexible invoicing options. It puts the customers at the center of how they want to make the purchase. I've tried Squarespace, now it's your turn. Head to squarespace.com for your own exclusive free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, use the link on the screen now and in the description to get 10% off your very own first experience. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I want to cover some of the cool stuff that Samsung internet can do. This is the thing that sort of the sprinkles on top that allows you to get the most out of your Samsung internet experience. The first is obviously Galaxy AI. The two things that you can find in here are summarize and translate. The summarize stuff is probably the most useful Samsung internet thing you can find because it'll literally scan the website that you're on and just give you the cliff notes and the important dot points that you should have to take away. If you're in a pinch and that article's long, it's great. Translate too. If you're in another country and it defaults to their language while you're there, you can translate that into your native language. And again, it doesn't reformat the website. It keeps it exactly how it's designed and just puts the right language there. It's sensational. Now in the menu items, so this is where I was talking about before that you can customize what appears in here. I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just going to handpick some of the best things that I think you should know. First is ad blockers. Now you might not be a fan of ad blockers depending on your industry that you work in, but they're an option in here through an add-on. When you click on ad blockers, you can see the one that you've currently got installed and you can see the ones that are available to download. The thing with this ad blocker too though, is if you are going to a website that kind of requires you to show ads or you want to support them with ads, you can disable it for that website specifically or temporarily. But some people might not want that and this is where you can go to turn it on, just so you know. There's also a way in here to search on the page that you're on. So if you wanted to find a bit of text or a bit of information, search the text in this part as well and it'll bring it up what you've searched for. The crucial one in this menu is the desktop site version. The reason why I like this one is some websites haven't quite nailed the mobile experience yet and they can run into some issues on mobile browsers. I've found that websites that usually accept payments or like a, a shop, they struggle. 
So switching to the desktop site, you get the proper desktop experience and it works a lot better. So having this option is great because it just forces something through when it maybe didn't work the other way. And you might just prefer the desktop site. And that's cool. The add-ons menu is where you can go and see what add-ons are available for Samsung's internet browser. They're like extensions for Chrome, but for Samsung internet on the phone. You can see what you can see. You can download them, add them in. Adblock is one of the add-ons that you can add as well. It's all in there, should you wish to look at them. There's two ways to access secret mode, which is Chrome's incognito mode. From here in the menu or from the new tab option down the bottom, both ways will take you through and you can protect it from your fingerprint and access some browsing that isn't tracked or history not saved. Use that for whatever you want. Some people who might want to zoom in on a website that maybe doesn't zoom, you can use the zoom function and you can apply it to just that tab too. Rather than needing to apply it to all tabs, you can do it just, just the one you're open, which I think is really clever. Like I said, you can change what you see in here and there's some really cool stuff that I haven't even added. Things like closing the tab you're on, things like the ability to access your history and clear your history, refresh the page. That is all in that top section that you can then bring into the bottom section should you wish to use it. Now Samsung have built some really cool ways to interact with web pages through the browser itself. The one I really, really like is the option to open up a new website in a different browser altogether. Let me demonstrate. So if you long press on a link that's in a browser, you can then drag that link to the edge of the display and then open it in a multi-window environment. So then you could have one browser at the top and one at the bottom. This is just really good, especially on foldable devices. I really like this because you can have two shopping websites next to each other to compare products, for example. Really good. Long pressing on the link, you can also bring up some shortcuts that you can access from that link itself, whether it be opening in a new tab or again, opening in a new browser. This is the spot to do it from. When you're reading a body of text and you isolate a sort of word that you want to search or a phrase, you can long press on it and then highlight it. And then from the resulting pop-up, hits web search. This will then take you to a new browser and search the web for that specific phrase that you've highlighted. That one I use all the time, especially if I'm having a discussion. I say discussion, but sometimes it's an argument with my wife and we're trying to solve something or resolve something. I will isolate the word or something and then web search it. And then that will kind of solve our query. It's really good. There's other functions too, but the web search is primarily my favorite one. Samsung internet has two widgets that you can put on your home screen. One of them is a bookmarks widget, where obviously you can just jump straight into your bookmarks. But the other one is a search widget, which I actually kind of like a lot because this one can act as basically the Google search widget with a little less function, but also directly access to Samsung internet's browser. One, you can just start entering a website and it'll bring up the website and you go straight to it or you can just search for something and it'll take you straight to Google. Can be a good way to just bypass Google search bar altogether and just go straight to the browser. I like to have both set up because I can have different purposes, but you might choose to just one and this is a really good one to use. Lots of people I know worry about the cross-platform ecosystem with Samsung internet. I know a lot of people that have Samsung phones and they still say, I rather use Chrome because I use Chrome on my desktop, but that's not really necessary because Samsung realized this and they have built extensions for both Microsoft Edge, which is the superior desktop browser, come at me, and Google Chrome's desktop browser, where you can actually add this in as an extension, sync your Samsung account to it, and all of your bookmarks will be in the Samsung internet extension on both of these browsers on your desktop. So that kind of alleviates the problem because you still have all of your years of Chrome bookmarks that you've built up, and you've also got access to your phone bookmarks that you have saved on your phone as well kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So you've kind of got everything covered ecosystem wise across your windows and your, and your smartphone when it comes to internet browsers. And I guess they've kind of got a bit to learn from, from themselves because Samsung internet's browser is Samsung DeX friendly and it'll launch into desktop versions of websites when it's plugged into DeX because it recognizes the environment as a desktop environment, which is really clever. And I like how Samsung have done that. That is the full breakdown of Samsung internet. In my opinion, it's the browser you should be using. Let me know if you're considering to switch it after seeing all this stuff. Let me know if you're already using it and what your favorite feature was that you made you switch to it and keep using it. Make sure you hit subscribe. Lots of Samsung content to come. Lots already existing on the channel. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Big supporter of the channel. Lots from them to come as well. Come follow me on my socials. I've got Twitter slash X and I'm also on Instagram. I'll see you in the next one. You.